Good morning, everybody. All right, it's uh, Saturday, March 19, at uh, 8.17 in the morning right now. We are um, in San Bernardino, California. Uh, getting ready to get on 10 West from 215 South. And just like I told you guys in my last video, I said there would be a really good chance that my next load would be picking up at uh, Walmart and Colton, and sure enough, that is exactly the case. Uh, we'll be going right back to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma with this load, the same location I went to last week. And uh, you know, the same place that uh, goes right by where my kids live, so should have a chance to see them again. Hopefully. Alright, um, so with what's going on now with my, uh, my health concern, I finally got my ultrasound uh, and uh, then I had an ultrasound results back uh, in between the loads. And found out they uh, did not find any blood clots in my leg. That's, uh, that was a real uh, relief. Um, so I don't really know what was going on with my foot. Um, it could have been a clot in my foot itself, or it could be something else. Maybe some soft tissue damage. They uh, they didn't find any uh, fractures on the X-ray, and I mean the only thing I can really think of would be either a blood clot in the foot or possibly plantar fasciitis, but I don't know about that because the, the intense pain I had earlier was right at the very top of my uh, my arch area, on the top of the foot. And fire... A458, wiki whack on. Now, plantar fasciitis, that usually, uh, that affects the, the plantar fascia, basically. That goes from the, the bottom of the heel area. Uh, up to uh, basically about where your toes are at. Shut up. Uh, yeah, it goes to the front of your, uh, to the back end of your toe area, and that's what creates the arch in your foot. So I would think if it was uh, plantar fasciitis, I would think I would feel the pain in the bottom of the foot, not the top. So, yeah, again, I don't know, I don't have any idea what is causing it, but uh, I did see my doctor again yesterday, and she did say uh, she was wanting to know if I had any uh, previous injuries to the foot. You know, maybe not recent, but uh, maybe past injuries that might have contributed. And I was like, yeah, you know, when I was 18, which was 30 years ago, um, Alright, we're by the way, we're getting off here at Rancho Avenue, same one I always get off at here. Most of you guys going to Walmart will go to the Riverside Avenue exit. Um, I never, I almost never go that way myself, but um, a lot of trucks do. Anyway, um, yeah, back when I was 18, I was playing, I was in college at Idaho State University in Pocatello, Idaho. And I was playing a game of pickup um, tackle football with some uh, some friends. Uh, one of them was a good friend I grew up with. He was also going to college there, and he lived up that way then. And uh, along with uh, several other guys who lived on our dorms that we were that well, at least that I was living in. And yeah, we were pretty much right in, uh, in that field, right in between the dorms and the football stadium there. And I remember I had the ball and it was, uh, he was, uh, my friend Jake was trying to tackle me. He weighed about, uh, I, at the time, I think I weighed about a buck 50, buck 60 or something. I was skinny, uh, real skinny. And uh, my friend Jake, he weighed more like 250 or so. All right, here we go, light screen. Shouldn't have any problems clearing that guy there. Even if he had been all the way up on the limit line, should have been good, so. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I had the ball. My friend Jake was coming right at me from up, from straight ahead and was trying to tackle me. 
and I juked him. And when I did that, he bounced right off my left shoulder and landed right on my left ankle. And I heard a cracking sound. I could have sworn I broke my ankle, but the next day when I, you know, when he and my roommate uh, helped me get over to the, the hospital across the street, you know, I got x-rays done. They said it was just a mild sprain. And I'm like, no, that was more than a mild sprain. I would not be surprised if it was fractured and they just never, they just didn't catch it. Uh, or it was a more severe sprain than they said it was, but, because uh, I couldn't even walk. And uh, I was in pain for a good month. I, had, I think I was using a splint for, uh, you know, one of those air splint things, whatever, for at least a good month before I could finally take the split off and, you know, walk with uh, minimal pain. Yeah, yeah, minimal to no pain, whatever. All right, we're going to turn right, uh, right here at Awamansa. And it looks like this guy is at the wrong limit line. Your line is right there. Your limit line is right there. The line's right there. Alright, so you guys, there's a reason why the fucking limit line is right there. Get your ass behind the fucking line or you're going to cause a problem. It's like, do you not pay any attention? You don't see the fucking line there? You went like a mile past it? Again, if you're going to go that far past the line, don't even bother stopping. You might as well just be in the intersection then. And uh, if you're going to be in the intersection, you might as well go through it. Alright, these are attention to details, guys. Don't be stupid like that, alright? I mean, your guy might not be an idiot by any stretch, but he was, he did something very stupid there. It's a fucking limit line for there for, uh, in that spot for a reason. So, uh, trucks like me can make that turn without him being in the way. Alright, anyway, uh, now we were talking about my ankle. Now, uh, it's possible that that could have had an impact on it because uh, I don't think about it, I, you know, because I have had past problems with my feet, usually the left, I would say, but I think I have had problems with the right before. And, you know, and sometimes it could be a gout flare up or something that, yeah, I don't even know for sure. Uh, it could be something else. But, you know, when I think about it, it's. Uh, more often than not, when I have had a problem, it has, it might have actually been on the left foot more than uh, anything else. So it does make me wonder about that. Uh, when I went to the urgent care the previous week, the um, PA there said that she thought it was uh, cellulitis or a bacterial infection, but when I went to my doctor yesterday, she said that she didn't see anything uh, giving her a reason to believe it was cellulitis, but said I didn't see it the week before, so I can't say for sure that it was not. But she's pretty certain uh, what she saw yesterday is not cellulitis. Uh, yeah, she's more she's more convinced that it was previous injury uh, damage that flares up or something. L3998. Alright, we are going to make a left turn here on to uh, well, now on, uh, Miguel Bustamante Parkway and don't see a line of trucks there, so that's good. Looks like we got a contractor up here. Um, that's a white Peterbilt, or K, I think. Might be a KW, I don't know. Could be a regular JCT driver in a KW, but just from right here, I get the impression it's a contractor in a Peterbilt. Yeah, that side looks like a Peterbilt side. 
Yeah, that is a Peterbilt. Yeah, I think that's a contractor. And there's another JCT here. I hope you guys don't find out the hard way that they give tickets to people who are parked there. If you're going to be parked there at all, you should probably be in your driver's seat. There's that 4466 Bravo. Say, don't say I didn't warn you. Don't park there if you don't want to get a ticket. By parking there, you're, uh, hey, it's, it's your problem to worry about, but uh, don't, you will risk getting a ticket if you, if you are there. Trust me. I used to run, uh, as you guys know, I used to run Walmart Dedicated right out of this same DC um, before I were coming to JCT. And I've been with JCT for four years now, and uh, uh, I've numerous times six seen... Six hours and 56 minutes. On uh, numerous occasions, seen uh, Colton PD out there ticketing trucks. Okay, guys, this is going to be a live load. Um, let's see. Right, Ben Shipper, I guess. Yard move. Why are you going to take so long to change the yard move status? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll be a live load, so I will be here a while. Uh, hopefully I'll get in a door pretty quickly. Uh, he didn't give me a door assignment right away, so we'll, yeah, we'll see. I wouldn't expect that I'll probably end up waiting for a dock door or something. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, we'll go around to the other side of the building and uh, get checked in over at the blue office by door 215 and then uh, Probably end up getting directed back over to this side the opposite uh, the, uh, the other end of this side of the building um, This guy getting uh, I don't know if he's uh, um, See what else? I'm glad. All right, so in that case, I'm glad. I think I'm glad I have my 128 gig SD card in the uh, the main camera, because then at least I can get 10, uh, about 10 or 11 hours of data off the rear cameras. As if I could even get to them. The last time I used that uh, that card, um, I had problems. Oh, okay, see, England's trying to back his empty into that spot right there. He might be oversteering. Yeah, he's. Well, I don't know. I might be all right, but yeah, he came kind of close to hitting that white Volvo. Yeah, he's oversteering. He's got. Yeah, look at where his, look how far his tandems are from the uh, from their uh, Delta forty one twenty two thirty nine forty four. Alright, so again, that's something that commonly happens when you're newer to driving, especially. Yeah, but it, it's not exclusively to people who are new to driving. I know people who have experience who just never took backing uh, uh, very well. Um, I mean, being great at backing um, seriously, and, you know, they don't put effort into learning, and you know, and so yeah, you can have people out here with. Uh, a dozen years, uh, more than a dozen years of experience or whatever. There are even 20 plus, 30 plus years and they might still suck at backing because they just never give a shit. Alright, look like the yard jock. He's trying to get to that trader right there. I'm just trying to... Uh, damn it. Hang 
not. Now I got, and I got the other spotter coming through the lane there. I'm trying to get my tra my trailer clear of him. I'm not even trying to not even trying to leave. I just <laughs> just trying to get out of that spotter's way. Dodgers fan, I just got an update on my Twitter that uh, Dodgers closer Kenley Jansen uh, just signed a contract with the Atlanta Braves. So it was kind of like the Dodgers traded Kenley Jansen for uh, Braves first baseman Freddie Freeman. <laughs> Since we just picked up Freddie Freeman, uh, you might as well call it that. So once this guy gets through backing into his spot, I'm going to park it next to this Yanni transport guy. Assuming, that's, uh, assuming there's not a bobtail in there. Double check that there's room there. Yeah, it's open. It's open and plenty of room. In fact, this guy here on my side is, uh, he's actually in a kind of a wedge pattern there with his spot, where he's actually pointing away from the spot that I want to park into, not park in, so. You might be uh, trying to pick up a few more uh, tips on backing. Uh, pay mind to what I was doing there. A lot of times I'm just pushing the trailer straight back at whatever angle the trailer is at. Uh, let the trailer get itself where it needs to be and then I'll worry about getting my drive tires there. Also, when I uh, I did steer hard right in the end to get my drive tires to go that way to the right and uh, it was going to put me close to this guy so I'm watching him first as I'm coming back, I also come over here to see where I'm at in relation to him as well as the lines. And when I come back over, my, when the front of my truck is going to kick back over to the right, um, I'm watching my mirror to make sure it doesn't come too close to his mirror. So a lot of details you got to be watching out for when you're backing. And it's just even the start of it. So maybe that to help some of you guys out. Um, anyway, I'm going to go get checked in and we'll um, have some more footage for you here when we dock in, right? All right, guys, we got an outdoor assignment. Uh, we're here for a little bit over 30 minutes. And it's currently 9.15, so it's actually still about 15 minutes before my my actual appointment time, so not too bad, I'd say. It'd be great if it was preloaded, but uh, I've been have plenty of time on this load anyway. It's, uh, it's not new, and... No, uh, okay, we're... That over there, somebody coming. Alright, All 
my door 168 is going to be the third door over from this end right here. So this JCT trailer right here should be in door 170, uh, so it'll just be two spots past that. Um, I'm going to need to open my, yeah, that's exactly where it's at, it's right there, next to two other JCTs. So I get my trailer doors open here and maybe do a blindside just for fun of it. Just uh, uh, go around and uh, come back, but you say it's, it's not bad practice to uh, work on your blind sighting skills. Uh, I can see exactly where my trailer is out there. It's uh, Coming in a little bit heavy toward this trailer on my blind side, but we're good now. Uh, I'm sorry, the position might be a little bit wide, but uh, we got a good angle now. Drive tires are getting a little bit close to this line here. Uh, no, we're still a bit wide, it looks like, over there. Yeah, definitely off to the side, so I'm going to come back over this way. It's, it's, I mean, it's good practice to do this, so. I mean, if you have room to work with, it's the best time to practice these because uh, there are going to be times where you're going to have to blindside and you want those skills um, on how to do it effectively and safely when you really need to do it. So, it's something I, do I disagree with. Uh, uh, most, most of the carriers will tell you... Uh, no, uh, don't uh, don't blindside ever unless you absolutely have to and I think that's irresponsible and also a lot of drivers get taught uh, by their trainers that their company doesn't allow them to blindside and that's bullshit it's uh, there are times you're gonna have to blindside I don't give a shit what company's name is on the side of your trailer or your truck you're gonna have to blindside sometimes Disconnect and pull forward uh, just enough to be away from the trailer. Drop my airbags, even though. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying there, uh, there's going to be times where you absolutely have to blindside. And, uh, the time to work on your blindsiding skills is not when you're in those situations where you absolutely have to do it. Yeah. Good time to do it is where you're in a spot where it's just uh, situationally good and there's room to work with. Like here, there's uh, a fair amount of room between the trailers next to me. Uh, 
Um, it's not. A, there's more than a normal amount, so uh, it gives me a more margin for error. And I was a little bit wide over on this side, uh, a little bit closer to this trailer to my left, the the JCT trailer, but. I knew I had the room to work with, so I was like, I'll oh, just uh, just deal with it and uh, correct as I need. Uh, so I was coming in too heavy toward this trailer originally, but then I corrected by uh, straightening out. Now, had it been a more normal amount of space, I would not have corrected the way I did. Because uh, I always talk about when you're bringing a trailer into a spot, don't bring it in there at a bad angle. Especially with the tandems far uh, anywhere near far forward, because uh, all that tail swing is going to be a much much higher risk of uh, hitting something. Uh, so, yeah, I always recommend uh, rotate the trailer. Uh, yeah, aim for aim the trailer at a spot out in front of your your desired hole, not into the hole. Um, but like I say, there's enough room here on this one there. Where I could see I was coming in too heavily toward this guy, because I could see where my trailer or over the or the ICC bar on tandems on that side of my trailer were in relation to the line on uh, that separates my spot from there, my door from theirs. And I could tell I was still kind of in front of theirs at first, and I was rotating a little bit too quickly. And speaking of with um, blind sighting, because uh, I rotate my flat mirror outward all the time when I do that and just uh, just an FYI for those of you guys who uh, need to work on blind sighting skills and might not realize this when you rotate the flat mirror outward it's going to create an optical illusion and what I mean by that is it's going to look like your trailer is not angled that far off from your trail if you're from your tractor when in reality it's a lot further off than you think it is and when it's a lot further off, it's going to rotate faster and uh, roll less than you th you expecting it to. Okay, so uh, just watch out for that kind of stuff. All right, I'm gonna. I don't want to have this video too excessively long or too rambly, whatever. So we'll have and there, yeah, we'll have some more to chit chat about later. Uh, you know, getting pulling out of the dock door or leaving here. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's stay tuned for that. Alright guys, we are done unloading here. Um, they didn't specifically say I can pull out of the dock door yet, but I know I can because being here so many times. Uh, um, door light screen and there's no uh, glad hand lock on my trailer, so I'm going to go ahead and disc him and hook up. And uh, we'll scale it and get out of here. Or go around, to the, go around to the other side and wait for the bills. close to the end of the row here so I can't really get sideways without having a backup so I guess I can do but let me get my load locks installed first then I'll probably I'll come over here real quick and close my doors and we'll scale it all right guys uh, oh, hang on. hello Okay, I'll be right there in a minute. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, even better. Um, pretty sure this is not going to be a heavy load. It is, uh, the last pallet is several, uh, a good number of feet in. I'm more than half full, but uh, nowhere near the back of the trailer. So, I'm almost certain I'm going to scale just fine. It was just a little bit short of what I needed to get that right side trailer door closed though. So, we'll go ahead and come over here, get my trailer out of the way real quick, and uh, get that other door closed and scale it. Okay, 
Okay, and also, as you heard there, I just, uh, they already gave me a call to tell me my bills are ready. Uh, oh, I think I'll leave this up because otherwise it tends to uh, make it more difficult for you guys to hear me. Maybe not necessarily hear me, but make out what I'm saying, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we'll scale it anyway just for a hell of it. I know I'm light enough on the drives based on my load gauge. And where the last pallet is, I'm certain I'm going to be good on the tandems too. But let's uh, scale it anyway just so we know. Just uh, because we have the scale here anyway. And it's nice to know what my gross weight's going to be. Uh, particularly if we get in any kind of stronger wind situations. Um, really want to know how heavy or light I really am. That way, because uh, I'd be a little bit more apt to... Um, park and uh, wait for the winds to die down if I have a much much lighter load. Not very likely I'm going to see winds that are going to be enough to uh, be a problem but you never know. What are you doing BNB? Are you waiting on the... That's not how you scale your tandems. Okay I, mean, I guess it works but usually do the steer axle first and then put the drive axle on there and then get the combined weight of the steers and drives and then subtract the steers from that weight to get your drive axle weight and then you put your entire truck and trailer on there to get the gross weight and subtract the total tractor weight from it I mean I guess that way I'll do it you don't have to do the math to figure out what your tandem axle weight is or your trailer axle weight but yeah, whatever. A little bit different, I guess. Either way, you still got to do math to figure out what your drive axle weight is. Alright, we got 11340 on the steers. Make sure, uh, let me go all the, make sure I'm all the way on because I'm close. Alright, there we go. Yeah, it's definitely a lighter one. Lighter on 38. 38020. It's barely 27,000 pounds in that ballpark. Fifty-five, six, twenty. Only seventeen thousand pounds there. The other reason I wanted to know uh, the weights is because the 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 load is not due until I like, think the twenty-second or something like that. And ideally, I would rather. I would prefer to be able to get out from under this load somewhere. Whether I swap or drop it in a drop yard somewhere or whatever, I don't know. But, I mean, it would be nice to go to see my kids. And I do have uh, some of those peanut butter patty, whatever you call them, Girl Scout cookies in the back. Uh, that, were, that we bought specifically for my boys. So that would be a nice thing. But I don't want to end up sitting for... Uh, better part of a whole day or so before I can deliver this load either. Ah, which way is this guy going? What are, you, what are we holding up for? There's nobody here to wait for. this guy go by since I have to this guy in front of me is going to have to stop at the stop sign anyway and a little bit of a log jam in front of him so no sense holding the bobtail driver up
All right, I've got the mirror over here, but I can't see if it's clear or not because the guy making his turn. Um, I, no, it looks like we're good. I see a blue truck over there, but he's in a dog door from what I can tell. Yeah, he is. All right, what is, some, I think Samora's getting ready to dock in. doing he's parked in a way like he's getting oh, no there's no one to dock in there okay that's a no parking area there that where there would have been a dock I don't know why this guy's parked like this strange all right so we'll just put it over here next to this CMDO trucking guy in between these two I guess and uh, we'll get our bills So we're gonna sign for bills and we'll be out of here pretty quickly. Alright guys, I'm gonna get out of here real quick and this, it'll give this guy some more room to work with too. So there's, uh, there's vacant spots here on both sides of me, so if I move out of the way over here pretty quickly, uh gives him plenty of room to uh, do his backing. And I can do what I gotta do, we can both be out of each other's way very quickly. Alright, uh, let's see, this guy get across, looks like it. You're going to stand there, I'm going to assume that you're wanting to uh, go across. Okay, um, uh, departure and loaded info already been sent, so... It's just a matter of getting out the gate, put my seal on, or have the guard put my seal on, put my, uh, my enforcer lock on, and we'll get out of here. What'd you do, clone yourself? Do you clone yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere they need me. <laughs> You're like a one-man army here. did it take that guy? I was here last week. How long did it take the, uh, the guy who broke down and blocked this gate? Oh, you know what? It had to be hours. Because I, I, I remember seeing that uh, they're here still like in the night. Because they broke down in the morning or something in the afternoon. Uh, I got here at like 7 or so that night. And when I left at like 3 in the morning, he was still there. Yeah, yeah I think it's in the morning. 
<laughs> you want me to take the bills or? Yes. What do you want? Just uh, pull up and open the back real quick. Alright. Okay. WJCT over here. around I don't know who they are I know they were in the dock door earlier real quick. Delta 3944. Also don't know who that is. And 4466 Bravo. Don't think I know them either. Oh yeah, it's a guy named Justin Morris. All right. I don't know him, know him, but I know his name. Only because I'm an admin in one of the JCT Facebook groups. And we require that drivers who want to join the group have to give their truck number and DM's info so we know that they're legit. And we actually have an HR person that is an admin to verify that they're giving good information. Got two more JCTs here. This area actually I think is more legal here. 4514. And 39.98, 49, 45.14. I don't know that guy. He didn't look too familiar either. 39.98. Who do we have? I've seen that one before as well. I just don't know who they are. All right, so just a bunch of strangers. Um, I don't know if you're able to tell because I've been. Uh, I mean, when I usually go outside the truck and show footage. It's usually accelerated speed, so I don't know if you can really tell that I'm still limping, but not nearly as much as I was. Um, I can almost walk without a limp, but it, it's still got a little bit of way to go. I would say I'm around 80, maybe 85% back to normal. Uh, hopefully that uh, clears up within the next couple of days. Uh, yeah, ibuprofen seems to help. Whatever it is, just hopefully go away. And anyway, um, you guys all know the route back pretty much. Uh, I can't remember. There was uh, might have been one or two other details I wanted to talk about. Um, somebody asked in one of my videos actually. Uh, I wasn't quite clear what exactly it meant by it or what they were asking about. Can I? other routes with JCT or something along that line. Uh, 
didn't quite understand what exactly they were wanting to know on that question, so I uh, if you have a, uh, a question on that part, uh, definitely ask it with a little bit more clarity what exactly you're wanting to know, and I can give you a good answer to that. Uh, Brandon Kelly, I know you uh, you said something recently too. I just forget what it was. I know. Uh, I'll figure it out later, I guess. Uh, maybe do it on the next video when I either deliver this load or... There's another one who doesn't know how to look at a damn limit line. It's the reason why the line is right here. Alright, there's a Ford Raptor coming the other way, so we'll wait for him. I don't know why it's so hard for people to figure out that the limit line is a good 20 feet back from the intersection for a good reason. They didn't just randomly put that limit line there for whatever, you know, because they, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They put it there because they know what they're doing. Or they got, I finally got smart and did what, the, did what they should have done a long time ago. Alright, so uh, let's say uh, route I'll take. I'm going to stop by the house first. I do have some more shorts that are that were ordered. I uh, had some torn ones I had to retire. And some new ones on order that are supposed to be here today. Now, I do want to get at least some distance away from the area before the end of the day. It doesn't have to be that far, but I... Yeah, I really like to get at least some kind of distance before the end of that, before uh, I end this shift. Yeah, even if it's just getting to Yucca, Arizona or somewhere, it's, yeah, just at least get me close enough where I can no question about it, get to Paul's Valley in two more shifts. Uh, I checked my ETA before I pulled out of the, the staging spot in uh, Jabro and uh, I think it was coming up at about 10 or 11 a.m. on the 21st as an ETA, even if I take two 10-hour breaks. And it's not going to be due until sometime in the morning hours of the 22nd. Probably really, uh, hopefully very early, like shortly after midnight, kind of early. Then I can do a full 10-hour break there and uh, be ready to roll immediately after I'm done loading. All right, uh, yeah, these guys still have a green light. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. These guys are turning anyway. That guy had his turn signal on. I'm not worried about him. All right, so I'll call it a day, and uh, I'm guessing I'll actually end up delivering this myself in uh, Paul's Valley. So possibly see you guys again then. All right, uh, you guys all have a great day, and uh, we will see you on the next one.